So this is a four wheel drive, 300 horsepower, two litre turbo Vauxhall Nova. And I am on the quest to make this car even quicker than it already is. So in the last episode, we fitted this massive turbo. And in today's episode, we need to upgrade this inlet system. Now this is okay for 300 horsepower, but any more than that, we're gonna be struggling. It's gonna be a bit asthmatic and it's not gonna do the job. So my plan is to use one of these to make a big plenum inlet for this C20L engine. So this is obviously a CO2 fire extinguisher, but more importantly, it's aluminium and it's a good shape. So my plan is to graft this onto the standard inlet manifold, which will hopefully allow me to make a bit more power. So first things first, I need to strip this down and see what I'm working with. I'll start by taking the valve out. This just unscrews, and then I launched in one part in the bin. As you can see, this didn't get plan. Right, so I've got a spare inlet manifold. I've actually got two of them. The plan is basically to chop this off here. However, I don't like the way the center runners flow. I want them all to be straight like the outer runners. So what I'm thinking about doing is cutting it all the way across here and then cutting these two center runners out, cutting the external runners out of the other manifold, welding them together so they're all nice and straight. I hope that makes sense. But the first job now is just to take these little bits off and see what we're working with. Now I'm a bit of a hoarder, especially when it comes to these old voxels. So I do have quite a lot of parts in stock, which is very handy for occasions like this. So I start by stripping the spare inlet manifold and then I'll move on to the inlet on the car. Now these are a little bit fiddly to work on, especially in an overbay, there's not a lot of space. However, it is infinitely better than some of the modern crap we have to work on. So for that, I'm internally grateful. Now you can struggle and remove the inlet as a whole with all the injectors in it, everything like that. But I always tend to strip it down. So I take the throttle body off, take the loom off, take the injectors out. I just find it's a little bit easier to get to everything and it comes out that bit easier. So the absolute worst part of doing this was getting to the hose that heats the inlet manifold up. Now this should be relatively easy, but when I built the engine, put the Jubilee clip in a bit of a stupid position. So it was my fault really. Once that was off, plain sailing. So I think I'm gonna cut it pretty much along here. So just there. As you can see, I've gone all scientific. I'm using a straight edge and a sharpie and then a reciprocating saw, a grinder and a jigsaw, combination of all three. To be fair, it was quite difficult to cut, but we got there in the end. So now the bolts off, I want to cut the centers out. Now, these are a bit of a pet eight for me. I've seen quite a lot of carb conversions over the years using a standard manifold and they've kept these all one key and it just doesn't look good. So we're doing it properly. Yeah. So I cut them off by hand, just guess it really. And then I use a file to square it all up. I cut up a spare inlet manifold. Again, external runners, clean them up, make them square, get them roughly in the right place. Something a little bit like this. Now to say I cut that freehand and I cleaned it up with a file, I'm pretty happy with that. So the next job is just to cut off the little lugs. These won't be required anymore. And then I dress it all up and clean it back with a flat disc ready for welding. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know I have a TIG welder. And you'll also know I've no idea how to use it. So please don't judge my welds. I am practicing and I've been practicing for a very long time. I can glue metal together, but it isn't the best. So if you want to see some really pretty looking welds, head over to a different channel. If you want to learn how to use a flap disc to cover them welds up, I'm the man. This is where I want to give a big shout out to my friend Connor. Now he helped me design this inlet manifold. So he has a background in flow testing and motorsport engineering. So we put our heads together and carefully planned and calculated the exact size and shape for even cylinder air distribution. Not only that, we also looked into plenum volume for maximum peak horsepower. Anyway, after a few tweaks, we ended up with this final design. Now this project's always been about high tech, modern performance. And with drawings like this, I'm sure you'll agree, this is no exception. So once again, a massive thank you to Connor for helping with the project. Now, jokes aside, it did give me some decent advice. We've deliberately tapered the manifold so it doesn't force all the air into cylinder four, which is quite a common issue apparently with big plenums. Another thing I wanna do is once it's mapped, I'm gonna keep an eye on the spark plugs and make sure they're all the same color. Because if they are, you know that the airflow is pretty similar. So with regards to actually making a manifold, as you've seen, I've cut a V out the center of the fire extinguisher. 
Now, this is A, to get rid of the valve hole, and B, to give it the correct taper we need, or hopefully the correct taper, shall we say, to, for even distribution. Well, the runners onto the extinguisher first, and then are followed by drilling holes out and using the die grinder to match the ports up. And then I spend a lot of time dressing the welds back. So I use files, sandpapers, die grinders, flap discs, you name it, I use it. Basically, my plan with this is I want it to look original. I want it to look like a bought item, not something I've made in my shed. So that's one half of the inlet manifold pretty much done, and I'm absolutely buzzing with it. I'm really happy with the finish. What I've done, I've gone over the whole thing with a needle gun. Now these are used normally for taking rust off big commercial items like brakes and things. But for this application, it's been really good because I've basically given the whole thing a bit of a dimple effect, which is going to try and replicate the cast finish. So when I'm done with this, I'm going to give it all a light sand again. I kind of want it to look like it's an original cast piece that's been painted rather than something I've made myself. So the next job I want to do is make sure this face here is completely flat along with the other side of the fire extinguisher. So when I weld them together, it's going to be nice and easy. I'm also going to go over this side as well, because obviously I've welded it all and it could have warped slightly. So I've put a bit of grey paint on all the edges and now I need to machine them down. Now I don't have a milling machine, so I'm having to improvise and do things the old fashioned way. So as you can see, both sides have got some paint on. And what I've done, I've got some MDF, which is coated, so it's perfectly true and flat. Put some glue on it, and then I've stuck some 40 grit sandpaper on. So what I basically need to do is I need to rub like that for a good while until it's nice and flat. Now, obviously, being aluminium, it is quite soft, so it shouldn't take too long, but I'm still dreading it. And once they're nice and flat, them two should go together nicely. As you can see, there's a couple of little gaps at the minute, like here. And then I can weld it all up, fill the hole in the end, weld a plate on for the flange. And then that is pretty much sorted. Right, let's start this. Now you guys probably don't realise just how long I spend doing these videos. I did a quick pass here and as you can see we've got a few low spots. And then I continued to do it for the next hour or so to get it perfect. Was it worth it? Absolutely. Do I deserve a sub for it? Yes please. So the next part is to clamp both parts of plenum together and then tick it all up. Now, like I say, I'm no professional at TIG welding. However, I did do a bit of research for setting the welder up for this. And if I'm honest, I'm pretty happy with the results. I'm never going to be a pro, but yeah, it's penetrated nicely. And it looks all right, I think. So yeah, buzzing about that. What do you guys think to the weld? If you've got any advice for me, please leave a comment below. I will read them all and I will take it on board. Next job is to grind all this off so you can't tell I've done it. So this is pretty much the completed plenum and I am absolutely over the moon with it. It's come out better than I expected. I think it looks like it's a cast piece. It looks like someone bought it. it doesn't look like it's been made in a shed in England. So yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled. Obviously, we still need to put a throttle body on, uh, but I'm still waiting for the aluminium plate for that. However, I have been doing something. So we need a servo taper. So what I've done, one of the old inlet manifolds, I've core drilled this out so that did go there and i've basically used i think it's a 50 mil drill core drill to go over the top of it and cut that out nicely just like that so the next job i need to do is to bolt this up on the car and work out exactly where this wants to be in relation to the servo hose and then i need to weld that on and then drill the hole out so this actually went surprisingly very well it's a bit of a weird shape but it actually lended itself really well to fit in so i literally put it where i wanted it which it just kind of naturally fitted, drew around it with a sharpie, and then welded it up. Now, I will say this didn't weld too well. Now, the old inlet manifold was fairly oil filled and stained, so I'm not sure if it was just a bit of oil inside the casting, but yeah, wasn't the prettiest thing, but don't matter because I flapped it back and then cleaned it with a die grinder afterwards. And this is my new toy. Now, it's not a DeWalt item, but it does use DeWalt batteries. The Chinese tools from eBay, but if I'm honest, they are DeWalt quality. And it was 39 quid. Now, I'm not sponsored by this company, but credit where credit is due. The quality is very good. And if I had a DeWalt badge on it, I'd believe it. The next job is the throttle body. So I'm running a VXR management on this. So I need a VXR throttle body. So I need some kind of flange to bolt this to the inlet manifold. So I've got some 10 millimeter aluminium. This is like machine stuff. So it's really flat, perfect. 80 mil square, which I've just cut out. 
put it out of the grinder and just spaced it with a file. So I'm happy with that nice and square. And the plan is basically I need to make that bolt to that. So I have bought this flange. This is for the outside boost pipe. I'm gonna go like that. I wanna use this as a template. So I'm gonna lay this on top. Then I'm gonna use a transfer punch. Now this is a punch which is designed to go through hole, nice tight fit. It will find the center because as you can see it's got a point on the end so if i lay this over the top here so there we go that is the center's mark next job i need to do use a set square i'm going to go diagonally across the center points Mark like so, with a sharp screwdriver. And that gives me the centre of the square. Again, I can punch that now, and I can drill it. Right, so next job, I'm going to drill these holes. So these need to be a six millimetre thread so m6 standard m6 for one so i'm going to use a five millimeter drill bit because you always deduct the thread pitch from the thread size to work out which size you need to drill it so five mil drill makes it m6 for one now i really should buy a pillar drill to make this kind of job a lot easier so i have to drill it as steady as i can with a hand drill get it as square as possible and then i follow it through with a tap being aluminium is nice and soft and goes through very easily. Right, so I've worked out exactly where the flange needs to be. Then I've used the center hole to drill through into the manifold. I've tapped it, put a bolt through. I've wedged it this side because this isn't completely level. It was obviously flat before, but because I cut the center out, the extinguisher welded it together, it's made it slightly tapered. So that's going to hold it all into place nicely. I've cleaned it all up. Next job is to TIG around the edge. And I can core drill through the middle, and we're going to be something like that. Now, if you're this far into the video, you're clearly enjoying it. And believe it or not, 80% of you who are regular viewers haven't clicked subscribe yet. So please do so. It supports the channel. It helps fund all these projects because I spend a lot of money and a lot of time doing these. So if you want to support it, all you have to do is click the subscribe button to show your appreciation. Another thing you can do, which is a new feature to YouTube, is to click the hype button. If you go to the comment section, swipe across, you can hype a video. Don't know how it works, but it's meant to be good. So if you want to do that too, brilliant. And the last job for me on this little project is to stamp my name into it. So I'm putting DBC, which is Danball Conversions 2025. As I often say, if it's good enough for Alan Milliard, it's definitely good enough for me. What do you think? So that is it finished and looking absolutely sweet now i've just cleaned it all up buzzed it off with a da just to give it a nice finish and i am absolutely over the moon with this yeah can't describe how happy i am now i've cut the hole in the end i can see inside and all the welds look really good inside as well so i'm absolutely overjoyed so there we go guys that is done and fitted and now we still need to do a couple of little things like this vacuum takeoff he's drilling in the uh, cast in here and i need to put a little barb fitting in i've ordered one i just need it to come it's a couple of bits like that but it's pretty much done i also need to put a banjo on the fuel rail because as you can see the fuel, original fuel pipe's not going to fit there but i've ordered the correct banjo so the fuel line will just go straight down it's going to make the job a lot better obviously we need to change the injectors anyway and i still need to make some kind of intake system now the plan is to put a 90 degree on here i'm thinking about getting rid of this brake server anyway and putting a quarter brake servo where the battery is that's not going to be a problem and i also want to run a charge cooler so this is the charge cooler i've got i'm not sure if to put it directly down there obviously the dizzy's going so we'll have a lot more space whether to put it upwards i'm not really sure but i think i'm going to weld this directly to that that's the map sensor flange but yeah it's going to go somewhere like that i might have to modify this a little bit we're not sure we're definitely going to make it fit though and obviously i need a little radiator for this for this to work and a water pump and a header tank now all that stuff's on its way and that's going to be a future video so i hope you enjoyed today's video it's taken me about 20 hours to make this 
let alone edit it. I absolutely overjoyed with it. And it just goes to show that you can make anything out of anything if you want. So this is a fire extinguisher I got out of a scrap bin and an old C20 XC inlet manifold over the moon, really happy. And I've got a very nice inlet manifold, which should flow very well and should be very capable of making even more power. So if you enjoyed today's video, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment below and stay tuned for more because we're going to be making lots more fancy things like this in the future. See you later, guys. Bye bye.